Hello everybody. We hope you're having a great day today. It's been a while since Yellowstone Season 4 has wrapped up and left us alone in this vast world. Despite being a very stressful series to watch, we feel like Yellowstone has become a very entertaining and meaningful series for many people around the globe. The show is following the Dutton family, who are the owners of the Yellowstone Ranch in Montana for the past 200 years. The family has a major legacy and puts the ranch in front of everything. Thus, in the capitalist world of the 2020s, they have a lot to fight against so that they can protect their legacy and belongings. The series is filled with local politics, philosophical and moral dilemmas, as well as anti-heroic characters that often impress us with their complex personalities. As you can see, it's not an easy, comfortable watch. It also has a very strong commentary on many difficult topics, from politics to religion. We can even claim that it teaches the viewers a lot about human nature and how things work in life. When you combine all these elements with impactful cinematography that makes you feel like you are witnessing an artwork, then you get a perfect show at your hand. Naturally, whenever the show wraps its seasons up, we're saddened by the fact that we will have to wait yet another year for a new season to come. This year, however, we as the Yellowstone fans got extremely lucky. Taylor Sheridan, the creator of Yellowstone, decided to release a prequel to the show and by doing so, he made our year. Since its release about two months ago, 1883 has become one of our favorites as it got almost every good quality of Yellowstone, but with a twist, it was taking place in the 19th century. As historical fiction fans, we couldn't wish for the better and thankfully, the execution of the series didn't let us down so far. The first few episodes of the show was focusing on introducing the world and the characters. Right now, however, as we reached episode 7, we're gradually but strongly entering into the real story that already hints us this show will become one of the masterpieces of Sheridan that will be discussed years to come. Episode 5 of the series has become the true turning point for the show as we watched one of the vital characters of the series, Ennis, being killed by a bandit. Ennis was vital because he was the main love interest of Elsa, who is the daughter of the Duttons. Elsa's role in the show is bigger than just playing the daughter of the Dutton family. She is also the narrator of the show, meaning that she has the biggest connection with us, the audience. Therefore, her pain quickly became our pain and we watched her personality shift from a ray of optimistic sunshine to the depressed widower. This shift has marked the shift in the show's overall tone as well. So far, despite watching one tragedy after another, we were still in the mind of Elsa and trying to focus on the positive sides of the incidents. And yet, since Anise died, we're also aware of the brutalities of this horrifying world, just like Elsa is. In episode 6, we watched Elsa embracing her dark side by giving up on anything and everything. Thankfully, this fall of hers didn't last for long as her family and friends came to support her and remind her who she is. We also got introduced to a new character who is likely to replace Ennis as a love interest. In episode 7 of the show, we expect Elsa to improve her relationship with this new guy through their mutual love and respect toward the deceased Ennis. We also expect her to keep Ennis alive through some visions and memories. We feel like it will be harder for her to be her usual self from now on and whenever she feels like she is losing it, Ennis will come to rescue, even if he is just a vision now. As far as the general plots go, in the last episode, we watched that the migrant group has reached yet another river in their journey. The previous river has proved that crossing rivers are not the strongest suit of the Germans. They not only had to leave a lot of their belongings behind, but also lost many of their friends as well as their food. Besides, before crossing the river in the previous episodes, we witnessed a small argument between Shade and James, who were not seeing eye to eye in terms of how to cross the river. We believe Episode 7 will witness a different version of all these, perhaps in a much more tragic way. We expect James and Shay to get into an argument, not only on the river crossing but also on the food scarcity. Shay promised James to find a cook before, but he is still yet to fulfill that promise. James, on the other hand, is prioritizing his family over everyone else, which inherently suggests the hunger of the many others. Thus, we expect to witness yet another series of tragedies in Episode 7. First, there will be the crisis of the food, which will be followed by the river crossing, which will probably witness a lot of deaths. Still, we don't think everything is bound to be negative throughout the episode. We feel like the romance between Nicole and Thomas will be one of the silver linings of the show. We might even witness a small wedding ceremony for the two, who knows. What are your expectations from Episode 7 of 1883? 
Do you enjoy the way that the series evolves? Do you think the show deserves more hype? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.